Or is culling the solution to the overcrowding problem? Filmmaker Simon Trevor examines this environment. I guess it was my granddad, L.J. Britt, that began it all. As an early day motion picture cameraman, he filmed nature documentaries for a theatrical series entitled Legends of the Wilderness. And two generations later, thanks to his legacy, I often found myself in situations like this in my youth. My dad, Bill Bird, kind of followed in his father's footsteps. As I grew up, I often found myself in some strange land, helping dad carry tripods or cleaning cameras. While other kids my age were involved with Little League Baseball, I'd find myself stalking the big game herds of Africa. Or while other kids were spending their vacations surfing at the beach, I'd be in some godforsaken wilderness, helping dad film hibernating grizzlies or hiking through the swamps of Florida in search of walking catfish. But being on the road with Dad has had its moments, like facing down one of Africa's Cape Buffaloes, armed only with a home movie camera. moments like this that a kid never forgets. Well, I'm older now, but like father, like son. Here I am, a third generation adventurer, off to seek out the intriguing world, dangerous creatures. The first hop of my globe-girdling tour was an eight-hour flight from Los Angeles to French Polynesia. Here, I'd meet the rest of my crew, who'd come down a few days early to make arrangements for our Tahiti assignment, filming of shark behavior and its relation to man. As our big jet departed Tahiti's airport on its continuing flight to New Zealand, we drove into French Polynesia's capital city of Papiete. Since Tahiti's discovery by Captain Wallace a little over 200 years ago, Papiete's snug harbor has been a haven for yachtsmen from the world over. Although the town's infamous waterfront nightlife has vanished, Papiete's quaint streets still offer the exotic look that reflects a French and Polynesian mixture. On a 
bluff overlooking Matavai Bay and the open sea channel that separates Tahiti from nearby Morea, I checked into the hotel, which would serve as temporary headquarters, while awaiting our equipment to clear customs. Also, we needed to obtain the proper government permits needed to film shark behavior. The next morning, we boarded Air Polynesia's flight to Bora Bora, which would serve as our base of filming operations. After about an hour's flight time, the pilot eased back on the throttles, and we descended toward the strip at Motumute, one of the small reef atolls surrounding Bora Bora's lagoon. Passengers are transported to the main island, aboard one of the airport launches. And the view of Bora Bora's lagoon is one you'll never forget. Upon arrival on the main island, the passengers are hustled aboard open-air buses, which deliver you to your destination. In our instance, the Hotel Bora Bora. It is here that you'll find the last of Bora Bora's famed sailing canoes, handcrafted dugouts hewn from a single tree and shaped to slice the water at amazing speeds. But to the experienced traveler, Bora Bora represents the opposite of speed, a chance to slow down, relax in the sun, and let the world go by. While I checked us into our bungalow, Brian wandered down to the waterfront. At the beach bar, he spied an old friend, a genuine island character, right out of the pages of Rascals in Paradise. Hey, Tawaroa. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Hey. Long time. Yeah, meet Max. He's my partner, Max. Hi. Called Tawaroa by the islanders, well, and danger man by those of us who know his adventurous background, you're doing the same. Keith Olsen long ago gave up the big city rat race. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the past 14 years, on, has made Bora Bora his home. Yeah, boat's all set. It's on dock. Hey, gang, here's Ty Roa. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, doing buddy? Hey. How's it going, bro? Hey, you down? Yeah, so tell me, what brought you guys down here again? Well, we've come down for a couple months to do some studies on the predators of the reef. Oh, more eels, sharks, and that type Hey, of wait a minute, sharks. If you want to see some sharks, you ought to come out with me and the captain on our boat. As huh? Keith explained to Brian and the crew, each morning he and his Tahitian assistant, Poro, leave the sanctuary of Bora Bora's protective lagoon and head into the Sea of the Moon, a triangular stretch of water bounded by the islands of Tupai, Maupiti, and Bora Bora. Their usual destination is the waters off the low coral atoll of Tupai. All hands keep a sharp lookout for the flocks of wheeling seabirds, which are a sure sign of fish below. Once into the birds, the action is fast and furious as the schooling Bonita strike control and lures. fish finder and a trailing sea anchor. Keith and Poro attempt to control their drift and keep up with a bonita schooling beneath the boat. Heavy hand lines and large hook bait fish are now thrown out in an attempt to land their main quarry, the Allison and Skipjack tuna. These larger fish lurk in the deep waters under the schools of bonita.
But often, another unwanted quarry is attracted to the bait, the ultimate predator of the deep, the open ocean shark. Alongside the boat, Keith must kill a shark with an explosive bang stick. In remote areas such as Bora Bora, hooks, stainless steel leader, and heavy lines are unbelievably expensive and must be retrieved if the men are to fish another day. In the meantime, the shark hookup has chased away the bonita in the tuna below. Dangerous creatures will return on Discovery Sunday. There's no escaping them. They creep, they crawl, they lie in wait, ready to strike like a bolt of lightning. They're the superheroes of nature on Bug Week, beginning September 20th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. Stronger than most, this umbrella. Those who carry the travelers for their insurance needs carry a solid 128-year tradition of excellence, chosen by 50% of the Fortune 500, backed by $53 billion in assets. Open in case you want strength and experience the traveler's way. You're better off under the umbrella. Who are you going to call the most this month? I'd probably call my mother the most. My mother. I'm my mother. With Sprint's new program, The Most, first you get 20% off whoever you call the most each month. My mother, because she worries. Second, you get 20% off calls to any of the millions of other Sprint customers automatically. My mother in Montana. My mom. I call my mother in Brooklyn, New York. Doesn't anyone around here ever call their father? Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them about quality. It's one of the biggest reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series Pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. Things do go bump in the night. There are boogeymen. Fortunately, Sealy's exclusive Posturepedic sleep system is designed to support everyone differently. More comfortably. To keep your night from becoming your worst nightmare. For a better night's sleep, better sleep on a Sealy. Tales of Nature, capturing wildlife at its most wild, exploring its diversity, and showing how animals interact with each other and with us. It's an all-new season this fall, only on the Discovery Channel. Over a hundred years ago, good entertainment was as rare as a good beer, till Henry Weinhard made his very own private reserve. 
Never had this before. Which made finding a good beer easier. Uh, gentlemen, Tex Velvet. Thank you. You are beautiful. But good entertainment right now, was still a long ways off. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Come on, you know the words. She'll be coming around. Round two of the wide world of trash. Who do we have today, Hal? In the trash off is Mr. Smart from the residential rent bin team versus Mr. Patience from the city pickup. They're off to good starts. Mr. Patience seems confident for his first contest. Both seem to be even going into the end of the collection phase. That's right. I think Mr. Smart may have met his match. Mr. Patience appears to be waiting, Hal. Smart's bin is being picked up as soon as he calls residential rent bin Did Mr. Patience miss his pickup day? He's going to wait a week. Mr. Smart and the residential rent bin team have done it again. Another triumph over trash. Call 818-348-2467. Dangerous Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. The next morning dawned clear and bright, and with a mountain of gear needed to film underwater, we awaited the arrival of Keith and his crew. Alongside Viatopi's dock, we started to load aboard the gear we need for our Tupai underwater adventure. Everything from dive tanks and weight belts to underwater cameras and safety gear. And what trip into Tahitian waters would be complete without an ample supply of freshly baked French bread? As we motored through Teabanui Pass, we sighted a sailboat heading for the sanctuary of Bora Bora's Lagoon. Once through the narrow gap in the barrier reef, we'll set a northwesterly course for the north end of Tupai, about eight miles away. As we cruise through the waters of the Sea of the Moon, we are briefly joined by a group of porpoises riding our bow waves. Ahead, he spots the circling seabirds, a sure sign that there's a school of fish just below the surface. Quickly, the Tahitian crew puts out the trolling lures, and within seconds, the boat cockpit is a beehive of excitement as fish after fish strike the lures. This time out, the crew cuts up the catch into large pieces of chum, which are then thrown from the stern of the boat. The result will be what's called an odor corridor, as the chum, blood, and oil is carried into the current away from the boat. The sharks, attracted by this corridor, will be drawn into the filming range of our cameras. Within minutes, the great predators are surrounding our small boat in large numbers. Some are even cruising the surface, meaning we must dive through them to reach the bottom. freely as we don our gear. Uh, 
Okay, well, let's stick together real close and, uh, and remember, John and I have to get the cameras after we get into the water. So wait, let us get the cameras and we'll all head down together, okay? And let's uh, stay out of the odor corridor so we don't get any motivated feeding attacks where they mistake us for bait. If uh, we get into trouble at all, let's back up against the coral. And if it looks like it's getting too tight, we'll head for the surface. Everybody take a different direction and cover your uh, buddy's back. And we'll head for the surface right away, okay? We'll give it a go. Keep an eye on the grays before you go over there and make sure it's away from your boat, okay? The white tips aren't too much trouble at all. Yeah, brother. Look at, hey, look at that one breaking the surface. Okay, you guys set? Go on in. Okay, Keith, you can give me the camera there. Okay, Keith, you can give me the camera there. Thank you, Todd. Right. Clear? Clear. Right. Following Brian's advice, we descend to the bottom in a group and waste no time in finding protective spots in the maze of coral spires and canyons. On the surface, Keith and Pearl continue to throw chum. And as we watch, the terrifying shark eating frenzy begins to develop. sharks are drawn into the area, the competition between the predators becomes intense. The muscular whip of their body movements can actually be heard underwater, and with slashing teeth they attempt to wrench food from each other. Unused to seeing divers, the sharks off Tupai show no signs of fear and repeatedly charge through our crew. We are now in a very defensive position. Backed into the coral, we must push them away with our cameras. It's amazing how much air one can use in a tense situation like this. The feeding sharks are now dangerously aggressive. With our pressure gauges reading low air, we must head for the surface. But even as our group ascends, we're followed by an aggressive gray. With our filming over, Keith turns our boat back to the safety of Bora Bora's lagoon. Our encounter with one of the world's dangerous creatures has been a memorable one, and there's no doubt in anyone's mind about the potential danger that exists with the shark, the world's most perfect eating machine. Dangerous Creatures will return on Discovery Sunday. This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by the GM Card, the new financial vehicle. a century, America's had a love affair with the automobile. Today, the romance shifts into high gear with a revolutionary new financial vehicle that turns buying power into horsepower, plastic into steel. The GM MasterCard. It puts the power of the world's largest corporation in your wallet. It offers all the advantages of MasterCard, but every time you use it, GM will credit 5% of your purchase toward any new Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck. 
5%. That could mean hundreds, even thousands of dollars in savings over and above any other discounts or rebates. And there's no annual fee. So if your heart still hears the call of the open road, the GM card can help you answer that call. The GM card, the new financial vehicle. We come from a land where the welcome home can make the journey worthwhile. So it's not surprising that our airline has earned the reputation for making travellers feel at home all over the world. While some would say it's just the Australian spirit to go further, others know that spirit simply as Qantas. This fall, Robert Urich returns to ABC. He's like a stranger to me. My own son, and he's like a stranger. In the beginning, I think we both really tried, but somehow we each went in a different direction. Now we've gotten a second chance to share the same road. Here's hoping that it leads to a new beginning. Catch the sneak preview of Crossroads, starring Robert Urich, this week on ABC. Unit approaching Point Charlie. A day out on the water seems like a simple pleasure, unless you don't have that freedom. That's why out here, the proud men and women of our Navy are safeguarding that freedom to enjoy life's special moments. Should Africa's increasing elephant population be allowed to run its full natural course? Or is culling the solution to the overcrowding problem? Filmmaker Simon Trevor examines this environmental and ethical issue as he chronicles 20 years in the lives of the elephants of Sado National Park. Don't miss the Discovery Journal premiere of Keepers of the Kingdom, Wednesday at 10 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. There's no escaping them. They creep, they crawl, they lie in wait, ready to strike like a bolt of lightning. They're masters of flight, unrivaled home builders, quick on their feet and fast on the draw. Witness their secret rituals, thrill to their exploits, as they struggle to survive in a land of giants. Soar with the superheroes of nature on Bug Week, beginning September 20th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. Dangerous Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. Even the most harmless of creatures can be dangerous if you invade their territory. Ouroboran Fabian Mataihau found out the hard way, and it almost cost him his life. On the islands of French Polynesia, a unique and mysterious form of fishing is practiced. In the jungle, there grows a plant called hora by the Tahitians. Its roots provide the necessary ingredients for this ancient method of food gathering. Once a bundle of hora root has been pulled from the ground, the fishermen head into the lagoon. On the day Fabian had his close brush with death, he was accompanied by his brother, Arati. Hora fishing has been practiced since prehistoric times, and the knowledge of its use is passed from father to son. The first requirement is to locate a coral head that's the home of an abundance of fish, and one that's in reasonably calm water, with little current. Once the potentially fertile fishing ground is located, the men anchor their boat and proceed to pound the hoar root into a pulp. When the pounding process is completed, the men enter the water with the bundled hoar root in hand. It's necessary to swim to the selected coral head, holding the root out of the water. This keeps it dry until the last moment. Once at the selected spot, the men dive and shake the bundle of hora around the base of the coral. The milky white liquid is emitted from the root pulp and filters into the caves and cracks in the coral head.
within a matter of minutes, the Hora root begins to take a toxic effect. Soon, the water around the selected coral head is filled with drugged and dying fish. Now it becomes a simple matter for the divers to swim around and gather their catch. For some unknown reason, certain fish seem more susceptible to the hoar root than others. The red squirrel fish seems more affected, but other creatures, such as the moray eels, barely notice and take the opportunity to enjoy a free meal. And this is where Fabienne's close brush with death really began. was this creature, the moray eel. According to Fabian's account of the incident, he was attempting to catch a drugged fish, which kept slipping through his fingers. It slid into a small cave in the coral, and Fabian tried to reach it. Mori sunk its teeth into Fabian's hand and held him like a living vice. Although in shallow water, Fabian couldn't break the surface far enough to catch a breath of air. As Fabian learned the hard way, even the most docile of creatures can be dangerous if they feel threatened by man. From French Polynesia, I continued westward across the vast expanse of the South Pacific. Finally, I could see my next destination, the Great Barrier Reef, which runs the length of Australia's eastern coastline. It was here that our camera crew would focus on two of nature's most dangerous creatures. it's called by the Aussies, is a popular tourist pastime when visiting the Great Barrier Reef. On Heron Island, I joined in the examination of a profusion of sea creatures that make the reef their home. It's a fascinating place, but care should be taken while reefing. Always wear shoes and watch where you step, for this is the home of the lionfish. Beautiful, but dangerous. In its dorsal fin, the lionfish carries a potent wallop, a poison that can be toxic. But if the lionfish can make you violently ill, there's another poisonous fish that packs an even more deadly sting. It's the stonefish. Aptly named, the fish resembles nothing more than a moss-covered rock, but its poisonous spines can cause hours of intense pain and occasionally death. This natural camouflage enables the stonefish to easily surprise its prey. But what's good for him is not good for you. So when reefing, watch your step. creatures that inhabit tropical waters. It's one of the smallest that's proven the most deadly to man. Millions of these dangerous creatures lurk within the seemingly beautiful undersea garden. Well, if you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about coral polyps. Now, how could such small creatures pose a threat to man? Simple. You see, the tiny coral polyp has an external skeleton. They live in close-knit colonies. 
When they die, their skeletons fuse, and ever so slowly, over eons of time, they build the great walls of coral reaching towards the surface of the sea. Since man first learned to use the sea as a marine highway, thousands upon thousands of ships have ripped out their bottoms on the jagged coral reefs. Even today, with all the electronic navigational aids at our disposal, hundreds of ships in an early death on the reefs of the world. graphic evidence of nature's toll. Grounded on the reef is the Protectorate, an Australian man of war, a ship of the line, representing one of the greatest empires the world has ever known, wrecked by the handiwork of the lowly coral polyp. of ships, the coral polyp can also be credited with an immense loss in human life and valuable cargo. It has been estimated that as much as $300 billion has been lost in sunken cargoes. From 1500 to 1950, experts estimate nearly 1 million ships have been lost on the high seas. In the 16th century alone, Spain lost $60 million in cargo. Portugal's total was even higher, at 124 million. The U.S. Hydrographic Office shows that the average annual loss over the past 100 years amounts to over 2,000 ships yearly. And as I found in my diving experience, the floor of the ocean is littered with their fascinating and often valuable remains. Turn on Discovery Sunday. Brought to you in part by Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. It's not that we're out to burst any balloons here, but the 1992 Buick Skylark comes with something as standard equipment that's optional on practically every import in Skylark's class. Anti-lock brakes. When you add up the cost of the car, that could save you almost $1,000. That could, of course, also help save you your life. There are a lot of good reasons for choosing the quiet company. wanting the most secure life insurance, the better the quiet company sounds. Northwestern Mutual Life. 
you want the great taste of fresh squeezed orange juice. A juice made with only 100% pure oranges. Remember, no other major brand comes closer to this than this. Tropicana Pure Premium, with no water added and none taken away. In fact, this is all we ever add. So when you want that great fresh squeezed taste, remember, you just can't pick a better juice than Tropicana Pure Premium. P.U. Nasty, rotten mildew stains. Try X14 Mildew Stain Remover. Compare three sprays of Tylex to just one of X14. In minutes, the X14 side is cleaner without scrubbing. Proof X14 is better. Monday, I soak my dentures. Tuesday, I brush. Wednesday, I soak. Wait, all you need is denture cream. Why soak when denture cream gets dentures nearly twice as clean with more than twice as much mint? All you need is denture cream. Every day. Thursday on the Learning Channel. They are miracles of modern medicine. Breakthroughs in medical science that make the difference in people's lives. Surgeries. To walk again or run or even ride a bike with your kids. Simple activities people with knee problems can only dream of doing. Today's science makes that dream a reality. Witness actual surgical procedures on Science Frontiers, Thursday night at 8 on the Learning Channel. Between the darkness and the light exists a world of illusion where reality is deception and the line between treason and valor can be razor thin. Espionage. Shadow warriors on the front line of a high-tech masquerade. a and &E sheds new light on the invisible war that separates us from them. Spies. Wednesdays on a and &E. mm. The HBO Big Four season featuring the Adams Family and other Hollywood hits. Dana Carvey hosts the Young Comedian Special. Big heavyweight fight, Ruddick versus Lewis, and the king of pop, Michael Jackson's first ever televised concert. The fabulous HBO full season. Thank you! All of this and much, much more. So big, it speaks for itself. Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. Continuing on our westerly route, our quest for dangerous creatures now brings us to Africa the fabled Dark Continent. In Kenya, I wanted to check out the really big game animals, such as the African elephant. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, where would the world's largest land animal place among the dangerous creatures? African elephant is a harmless, sensitive animal. It's only when they feel threatened that they become a danger to man. However, on occasion, you'll hear of a rogue, an elephant that for some unknown reason has run amok. One in Zululand killed 12 people in a fit of rage. Another in Zambezi wreaked havoc over the area by raiding crops, chasing natives, and when catching them, dismembering their bodies with his powerful trunk. African elephant can weigh as much as 12 tons. It's easy to imagine the danger one could do if riled up enough. As I watch the herd, I wonder what could cause an elephant to turn into a rogue. They seem so peaceful. Danger scale, I'll rate it a 10. Kenya's bushland is also the home of the African lion. Like all cats, they spend most of their time sleeping or resting in the shade. 
When hungry, they will skillfully stalk their prey and with radar-like vision, single out a specific gazelle or wildebeest from the herd. Never varying from their chosen target, the lion's short charge is a display of raw power and quickness. One bite in the neck is usually all it takes. Like the tiger, occasionally a lion becomes a man-eater. In the Jumbi, lions have eaten over a thousand people. In the Mathengi region, two rogue lions killed 20 people over a period of two months. And each year, the Nairobi newspapers report more attacks on villagers who have inadvertently stumbled across a pride of lions hidden in the bush. Most animals must feel threatened or be provoked before they will attack man. Not so with the rhino. Often the slightest movement or sound will trigger a thundering charge. Some believe its terrible temper and aggressiveness is due to bad eyesight. But that theory may soon be just academic. For in Kenya, only 500 of the prehistoric beasts still survive. That's why these men are risking their necks in an effort to move the animals to safer areas, away from the poachers, who kill rhinos only to grind up their horn for sale as an aphrodisiac. This is Murchison Falls, one of the most spectacular sights in the world. Here, all of the waters of the Victorian Nile thunder through a rocky chasm only 20 feet wide. And it is here that we've come to study another of Africa's animals, the hippopotamus. The hippo was found all along the Nile, from the Delta, through Khartoum, and on to Lake Victoria. Now the hippo, the behemoth of biblical days, has all but vanished in many places. But not in the Murchison Falls area, where they are now protected from encroachment of man. Here they can live in peace and relax. the scales at around 8,000 pounds, but despite this bulk, they can move with amazing speed. It has been estimated that hippos live to about 40 or 50 years of age. The Murchison Falls National Park covers 1,500 square miles in Uganda. It has been set aside as a wildlife sanctuary. Patrolling the area is one of the major jobs of the rangers. 
They must constantly be aware of the food supply available and the health of their charges. Boat trips are naturally the most convenient way for rangers to patrol the area, making sure the people are not disturbing the hippos and that the hippos are not disturbing the people. For the water horse kills a surprising number of Africans yearly. Estimates run as high as 200. Basically a water animal, the hippopotamus can submerge for long periods of time and often does so when alarmed or foraging for food. Most human deaths occur when man invades the hippo's watery domain. The worst area for such attacks is right here in Murchison Falls, where the Bagunga tribesmen poach crocodiles from dugout canoes. natives that fall victim to the enraged hippos. Two South African officials, Adri Stein and William Steinberg, fell prey to hippo attacks in separate incidents. Steinberg was attacked by a hippo that charged out of the water. With one bite, the beast crushed his chest, killing him. On the other hand, Adri's was tracking a rogue hippo on the Okavango River when thrown from his boat. He was never seen again. Africans, the danger from hippo attack is far overshadowed by this fellow. Crocodiles have been around for over 170 million years, and during that time they have undergone very few evolutionary changes. They are another of nature's perfect eating machines. Crocodiles have few enemies when fully mature. A baboon would be wary of a crocodile, but raiding a nest of croc eggs is another matter. Untold thousands of eggs are destroyed like this. At six feet long, monitor lizards are the next African reptiles in size to the crocodiles. Armed with sharp teeth and claws, they too search out the crocodile eggs. Despite raids by predators on their nests, the crocodiles survive as one of Africa's truly dangerous creatures. They possess amazing strength and speed and account for as many as 1,000 deaths a year. Often, crocodile hunters will find human remains inside the reptile's stomach. In East Africa, one such crocodile contained 14 human arm and leg bones, three spinal columns, plus an assortment of trinkets and jewelry. Creatures will return on Discovery Sunday. 
the exhilaration of flight, the genius of design, the invention that changed our world. The Discovery Channel proudly presents a sweeping history of aviation, a 13-part original production examining the breakthrough airplanes and the innovative people behind them. Frontiers of Flight. At the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., John Honey and cinematographer Terry McCardle face a major challenge, using the camera to breathe life into planes which haven't flown for decades. Their efforts will give viewers a rare glimpse of history's most famous aircraft. In this gallery, we, we have some of the most remarkable and most uh, important planes in the history of flight, um, from the Wright Flyer, the X-1, the X-15, um, and they're up in the air, you know, so people coming to this museum can only see them from the ground. We've had the great good fortune of being able to ride a crane around them to get within that distance of them and to see the textures and uh, see details that people haven't seen for years. Frontiers of Flight begins with the early days of aviation recalling the pioneers, past and present. One of many fascinating stories is the 1986 flight of the Voyager, non-stop around the world. We, we've talked to Bert Rutan, who, who designed it. We've talked to Dick Rutan, who flew it. We've talked to Gina Yeager, who flew it. So we, we feel that we know these people pretty well now because they've been very frank about the, the things that happened. And, and there, was, there was high drama in that story. There's romance in that story, all those sort of things. Frontiers of Flight, a 13-part world premiere series coming this fall only on the Discovery Channel. Switzerland's Natural Wonders, Monday on A World Away. When Jack and Sally split... Don't make a big deal out of it, okay? Because we're both fine. Oh, we're fine, we're fine. Judy worried about Gabe. Do you think we'd ever break up? <gasps> Samantha moved in with Jack. King Lear. Shakespeare never wrote about a King Leo. Michael moved in on Sally. Who are you? Hey. Is he living here? It's none of your business. And Gabe was left out in the rain. How'd you get the name Rain? Husbands and wives. This whole thing is becoming very clear to me. Rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. To fight the effects of corrosion, the body of the Buick Regal has been built with two-side galvanized steel that goes beyond what most car makers use. Beyond Honda, beyond Toyota. In fact, all Buicks are warranted against outer body rust through for six years or 100,000 miles. And that's a promise you don't have to take with a grain of salt. As you invest, remember, the stars that shine brightest don't always shine longest. That's why it pays to hire an investment firm with an eye to the future. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Soar high in the McDonnell Douglas F-18, Wednesday on Wings. Senator? Yeah, Jack, come on in. You wanted to see me? What happened here? Senator. Laura, originally when this cable bill was drafted, our intent was to regulate rates. That's right. Now the way I'm reading it, it's going to raise rates. Only a few dollars a month. Yeah, Jack, a few dollars a month. Could be as much as three billion dollars a year if you count all cable customers. Well, you know what happens. The special interest groups get involved. Before you know it... One of the reasons is the major broadcast networks want to now start charging cable users extra to watch their programs. Only cable users? Everyone else will still get these programs for nothing. That's the way it'll turn out. And I take it nobody's asked the cable users how they feel about this. Well, no. want to end the ban on ivory. This could mean the end of the elephant. Call the African Wildlife Foundation. Don't let the slaughter start again. Tales of Nature. Capturing wildlife at its most wild, exploring its diversity, and showing how animals interact with each other and with us. It's an all-new season this fall, only on the Discovery Channel. Dangerous Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. 
Central America is the home of the vampire, often featured in Hollywood movies. Silently, the vampire makes an incision on exposed flesh and begins its feast of blood. Is this strictly myth, to be shrugged off and forgotten? Indeed it is not, for the vampire bat does just that. There are billions and billions of bats on this earth, roosting in caves, attics, and other dark places. They comprise the second largest population of mammals in the world. Many species carry rabies, and some people have died just from breathing the air in a bat cave. But only one species seeks out victims to drink their blood. That is the vampire. When scientists found this bat in the tropics of the New World, they named it after the legendary European spirits, which arose by night to feast on human blood sneaking up on victims as they sleep, binding them, and slipping away unnoticed. The direct physical evidence of this nocturnal visit is a minor incision and perhaps a bit of dried blood. But later, the victim can develop the unmistakable symptoms of the dreaded rabies. adventurer Chuck Granada, we're entering a vampire cave, a chilling walk into the world of perpetual darkness. The light of the lantern can illuminate the way, but it cannot dispel the fears that lurk in the deep recesses of the mind. In Sinaloa Cave, Chuck comes across a colony of vampires. While true that a single bat takes only an ounce of blood at a time, there may be thousands of them in a single cave. Altogether, they would require 15 gallons of blood a night from the surrounding area. This amounts to a staggering 5,750 gallons of blood annually. Chuck is not quite that generous, but he does bring them a snack, sort of a cocktail before the evening's main meal. now approach the bowl of blood and start to drink. They have incredibly sharp teeth with cleft lower lips. This enables them to snip out a small portion of skin. As the blood swells from the wound, the bat then laps it up. are the only mammals capable of true flight. In their nightly forays, cattle are the preferred victims. But in a pinch, humans are perfectly acceptable.
In ancient order of mammals, the bats are separated from all others, and the vampire lives in an even smaller world, one of darkness and legends created by man. Dangerous Creatures will return on Discovery Sunday. It's an all-new season coming this fall, only on the Discovery Channel. Sorry, we're out. Dear Thompsons, when the store ran out of Thompsons Water Seal, we reluctantly finished our deck with another brand. What a mistake. The Thompson side beat it up in the rain. The other side, nothing. The one on the left? Even the clerk agreed. Nothing works like Thompsons. Sincerely, Blair and Becky Jones. Charlotte, North Carolina. Now from Thompson's, this free applicator spreads a gallon in 10 minutes, delivers just the right amount for complete, even coverage. A $3.99 value, yours free with these special packages. The world's most comfortable mattress would be one you couldn't feel at all. That's the idea behind Sealy's Posturepedic Sleep System. Designed to support everyone differently. To conform to every curve. Distribute your weight evenly. Only Sealy Posturepedic has it. And for a more comfortable night's sleep, there's nothing like it. With the introduction of the 1992 Le Sabre, Buick's reputation continues to grow. And it pleases us that people are taking notice. Because Le Sabre isn't just another fine motor car, it's a Buick. And Buick is rapidly becoming an enormous symbol for quality in America. The more reasons you have for wanting the most secure life insurance, the better the quiet company sounds. Northwestern Mutual Life. Have the traveler's checks here. Uh oh. Well, now there's American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Should Africa's increasing elephant population be allowed to run its full natural course? Or is culling the solution to the overcrowding problem? Filmmaker Simon Trevor examines this environmental and ethical issue as he chronicles 20 years in the lives of the elephants of Savo National Park. Don't miss the Discovery Journal premiere of Keepers of the Kingdom, Wednesday at 10 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Dangerous Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. The most widely distributed dangerous creature in the United States is the rattlesnake. This is an eastern diamondback, one of the largest and most dangerous, averaging around three feet in length. They can grow to six feet. Their camouflage bodies range from olive to black and are marked by a distinctive diamond pattern. One bite can be fatal and most people avoid these killers. But there are those who go into the wilderness for the purpose of finding rattlesnakes and bringing them back alive. One such man is Ross Allen, founder of Florida's Ross Allen Institute. He and Richard Fowler are professional snake hunters, men who daily lay their lives on the line searching for specimens. Both men are aware of the agony and pain snake bites can cause. They also know that the very same venom that kills can save lives. The only way to get that venom is from the snakes that produce it. Allen has perfected techniques for finding and capturing reptiles which most humans would just as soon avoid completely.
Ross and Richard often look for rattlers in holes dug by the gopher tortoise. A mirror reflects the sunlight and locates the rattler near the entrance to the burrow. Once he has pinpointed its location, Richard uses snake tongs to pull the reptile out of the den. Even with the tongs, snake handling is tricky business, and close calls are often a part of this hazardous occupation. snake in the bag and one assignment almost done. Each time these men go into the field, they face the possibility of being bitten. They can tell you from experience that there is an instantaneous burning pain, followed by swelling of the wound area and discoloration. Then comes muscular twitching and nausea. Snake bite can also cause faintness, weakness, and dizzy spells. Blood pressure, pulse, and body temperature fluctuate wildly and without proper treatment, death may result. Surface temperature gets too hot, rattlesnakes descend into their den. Being a cold-blooded creature, the rattlesnake regulates its body temperature by getting out of the sun. On hot days, Ross pushes a garden hose into the den and then uses it as a stethoscope to determine if it's occupied. To flush out their quarry, Ross uses a tiny bit of gasoline, which he pours down the hose. The fumes then drive the rattlesnake to the surface. snake emerges, Richard grabs it. No matter how much experience these men have had, there's always a few tense moments when attempting to bag the snake. producer of dried snake venom for medical purposes. There is no safe, easy way to obtain the venom. Each snake must be milked by hand. Andy Kakoulis has taken the precaution of donning knee-high boots and handles the snake with a stick. He must transfer it from the cage to the floor where he can pin it and get a proper grip just behind the snake's head. Once under control, Andy takes the snake to a beaker where he hooks the fangs over the edge. 
The fangs are like tiny hypodermic needles, and by pressing the venom glands, the poison courses through them and into the beaker. Even after milking a snake, there's enough venom left in the glands to cause serious poisoning. The trick here in the lab is to make sure that the venom goes into the beaker and not into a wound. strikes, the fangs swing out as the mouth opens at an angle of 180 degrees. Upon contact, the venom is forced into the wound. Pound for pound, the eastern diamondback is among the most deadly snakes in the world. The venom is used in the manufacture of snake bite serum for the treatment of pit viper bites. Called anti-venine, the serum is put through a series of processes which will eventually end in a finished product, available by prescription to doctors. snake venom looks like under the microscope. It is structurally complex. It has never been completely analyzed. Dr. Joseph Gennaro is a university professor and serves as a consultant to the Institute. He's an expert on venoms and probably knows as much about their effects on tissue as anyone alive today. Under the microscope, we can observe what happens as the venom breaks down the human blood cells. Its action is slow and painful, since the venom actually starts a digestive process in the wound. The result is dying flesh and the possibility of gangrene. But thanks to men like Dr. Gennaro, the incidence of fatal snake bite has been reduced. Dangerous creatures will return on Discovery Sunday. Examine the gender of our brains, the undeniable differences of brain sex. Tuesdays at 10 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. We've been telling folks for some time now about the fresh squeezed taste of Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice. However, there's a certain segment of the population who prefer their juice the way Mom used to make it, full of juicy bits of real orange. For those folks, there's Pure Premium Home Style. So if you like juicy bits, no other major brand comes closer to this than this. Tropicana Pure Premium Home Style. No matter which you prefer, with juicy bits or without, you just can't pick a better juice than Tropicana. You probably think the best American car value is some little econo box you have to settle for, right? Nope. It's a Buick. The luxurious Buick Park Avenue. That's according to the Complete Car Cost Guide. They calculated the five-year cost of depreciation, financing, insurance, fuel, maintenance, and repairs, and found that Park Avenue is the best American car value. For a free reprint from the Complete Car Cost Guide, call 1-800-4-A-Buick. There's no escaping them. They creep, they crawl, they lie in wait, ready to strike like a bolt of lightning. They are the superheroes of nature on Bug Week, beginning September 20th at 9, only on the Discovery Channel. If you're tired of the noise and pollution of city life, we've got a beautiful alternative, and it's just 10 minutes north of the valley. It's Stevenson Ranch, a master plan community designed for our generation. Quality homes feature greenhouse windows and energy-efficient kitchens. Living rooms with vaulted ceilings and oak staircases. Master bedrooms and baths with spacious walk-in closets. And breathtaking views. Choose from six different neighborhoods. From sophisticated condominiums to elegant five-bedroom homes. Now, with easy qualifying and low interest rates, you can afford to leave city life for good for the good life at Stevenson Ranch. Just 10 minutes north of the San Fernando Valley, off Interstate 5, McBean Parkway exit. 
and discover the difference master planning makes. Call 1-800-310-RANCH. Dangerous Creatures now returns on Discovery Sunday. Our global research on dangerous creatures has brought us here to the mountains of the Pacific Northwest. For it is here that we find America's largest carnivore, the grizzly bear. Its scientific name is Ursus horribilis, the horrible bear. At one time, it ranged throughout the plains and mountains of the American West, clear to the Pacific shores. Despite the grizzly bear's reputation, even so powerful an animal could not hold out long against man's westward expansion. Breech loading and repeating rifles took their toll and by 1922, they were gone from California. A year later, they vanished from Utah, and by 1935, the grizzlies had disappeared from Oregon, New Mexico, and Arizona. Today, their range is confined to the mountains of Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. They can also be found in Canada, and on into Alaska, where they resemble their close cousins, the Kodiak or Alaskan brown bear. In the lower 48 states, the grizzly population is estimated at 750 to 1,000 bears, confined mostly to Yellowstone and Glacier National Parks. And here is where the modern story of the grizzly continues to unfold. As Americans develop more leisure time, the national parks absorb more and more vacationers and campers. This brings humans into direct contact with nature's creatures, including Ursus horribilis, the grizzly bear. When entering the parks, the Park Service gives each motorist a brochure about bears. It warns readers that because of their protected status, they have lost their fear of man. While this may make them appear tame, actually in this state, they are more dangerous. But each tourist season, it seems someone ignores the warning. Come here, bear. Honey, get out some bread. Let me throw some bread at him. Come on, bear. Oh, this is great. This is great. Come on, Bear. Look at the size of him. Come on, over here. Over here. Honey, honey, keep throwing bread, okay? Come here, Bear. Here's some bread. Here's a little more bread. You want some more bread? Here's more. You like that? Honey, be careful. Open your mouth so I can throw you some bread. Here's some bread. And there's some more. You want some more? Bob, be careful. Be careful, Bob. Bob, be careful. The more troublesome bears are trapped and moved to remote areas. But even here, there is increasing human pressure from backpackers. If you are planning a trip into grizzly country, naturalists and the Park Service offer this advice. Make noise when traveling. Some hikers wear small bells on their shoelaces to avoid surprising a nearby bear. Stick to the marked trails. And when you spot a female with cubs, give them plenty of room. Most grizzly attacks are provoked by carelessness on the part of the hiker, not the bear. Some experts theorize that certain odors may trigger attacks. Deodorants, hairsprays, and cosmetics are all suspect. The scent of a domestic dog may also lead to an attack. When in doubt, make a detour. Service also recommends keep a clean camp and use a minimum of odorous foods. Seal surplus food in clean wrapping material or in airtight containers. Ice chests are generally not bear proof. 
A good deodorizer is effective in eliminating food odors from your camp. Food left on tables or stored in the tent is a natural target for bears. Campers often suspend their supplies from trees out of the bear's reach. It is also advised that you should burn all garbage and food containers to eliminate lingering odors. With these simple precautions, the backpacker can relax and enjoy nature's wonders. Our worldwide tour produced a number of contenders for the classification of dangerous creatures. But as I reflected back on the sights I'd seen, one thing became clear. Despite the ferocity of some animals, despite their size and temper, it's man who holds the title to the world's most dangerous creature. For as his population grows by leaps and bounds, he threatens the very existence of the other creatures. As he clears the wilderness and makes room for more of his kind, the lesser creatures of the world must retreat into smaller and smaller spaces. And as we push into the wilderness, the residue of our civilization clogs the lakes and pollutes the streams. It is time for us to decide. Shall we continue as the me generation? Or shall we make a commitment to the future? Let us hope we choose a second course and leave a little of nature's wonders for all people, for all time. It's a blend of skiing, snowboarding, and surfing, and has become one of the hottest winter sports around. Strap on a snowboard and catch the wild white waves of winter on the smooth groove. Natural Wonders, Monday on A World Away. This portion of Discovery is brought to you by American Express Traveler's Checks for Two. You are here. He has the Traveler's Checks here. That is the problem. Well, was. Now there's American Express Traveler's Checks for Two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. A smart investment analyst isn't a visionary, a magician, or a seer. It's someone who does a lot of homework. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. A better way to catch your Z's is on Celia's Posturepedic Sleep System. Designed to conform to your shape. Distribute your weight evenly, comfortably. Only Sealy Posturepedic has it. So for a better night's sleep, better sleep on a Sealy. Thursday on the Learning Channel. They are miracles of modern medicine. Breakthroughs in medical science that make the difference in people's lives. Surgeries. To walk again or run or even ride a bike with your kids. Simple activities people with knee problems can only dream of doing. Today's science makes that dream a reality. Witness actual surgical procedures on Science Frontiers, Thursday night at 8 on the Learning Channel.